Hello, and welcome to the Gospel Lounge. The Gospel Lounge is a place where we're going to have discussions about how the Bible applies to everyday life. So sit down, relax, and join the conversation. Episode 10, and today we'll be talking about the importance of the breaking of bread. And for us to fully understand the function of why we do this in the local church, we'll look at a few verses in scripture. Today's reading is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. The word of God says, For I received from the Lord what I deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and then when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We pray and trust that the Lord will bless the reading of scripture. Based on these few verses, we can now answer the question, the importance of the breaking of bread. So the breaking of bread sometimes is referred to the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. And this is a function of when the church comes together, we do an act of remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Different churches have got different ways of how they do this. I'll speak particularly on the function of how we do it in my church. So in our church, we tend to do it on a weekly basis because we follow the pattern of the New Testament writings where we saw that this was done on a weekly basis. So at the beginning of the week, they did this. And I think it's also befitting to us as the people of God to do this as often. And if often, it's often when we meet. And I think this is the thing that we can start our week with a remembrance of our Savior who died for us and who gave himself for us. And this is us being obedient in us remembering him in his appointed way. The breaking of bread is something that is symbolic in nature. It helps us take us back to Calvary. Takes us back to Calvary and knowing that what the Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary was actually an act of obedience towards God and to the mission of redeeming mankind to himself. What happened on Calvary, his body was indeed broken for us because we see that he was, as scripture tells us in the Old Testament prophecies, he was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes we were healed. And we see that what the event of what went through him going through that was him ultimately taking the wrath of God that was supposed to be vindicated on mankind and placing it on himself. And we see that that was an act of him showing that his body was broken for us. The pain and the agony that he had to go through was not because of he was a sinner, it was because we were sinners. And this was now befitting for God to take that event to pour on the wrath that was supposed to be placed upon mankind, upon him. And we see that this is an act of him saying that he has given himself up for us and he becomes a sacrificial lamb that is going to be presented towards God, which is going to be pleasing in God's sight. So we see a great exchange here. In his body, he takes our sins and then he imputes his righteousness towards us. So that now the person who puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is befitting to say that the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ was indeed for them and they can now come into God's side as people who have been redeemed because of that sacrifice is indeed pleasing in his sight. And the cup is symbolic in nature as it also because it speaks of the blood that was shed on Calvary. We see that blood had to be shed. This was a, an event that needed to happen to show that a sacrifice has taken place. We see it in the Garden of Eden, as well as also the nation of Israel had to do it year in and year out. 
but this was pointing towards a blood that can cleanse us from all sins, wash away our sins, past, present, and future in Christ Jesus. And we see that that blood does wash us and cleanse us and help us become spotless in the eyes of God. So there is a sacrifice, but there's also blood that washes us and makes us clean in the presence of God. So it's befitting for the believer to want to function and remember that the Savior who's done this remarkable event for us. For us, we are only coming into this position not based on anything we've done, but on the account of the Lord Jesus Christ. So these symbolic natures of the bread being broken and us taking on the cup helps us re-engage our minds and our hearts of the salvation we've attained in Christ Jesus. So when we come together, we are actually celebrating the act of what Christ did on Calvary. And we're actually seeing the pain and the agony of what our sin was so deep that God could not spare his son. And it helps us reflect on the love that has been bestowed because of Christ Jesus. So when we are doing this, we're remembering the Lord Jesus Christ and the act that he had to do to purchase us from the slave market of sin. Mankind, as we have said throughout a lot of the podcasts that we've put before, is dead in sin, broken, and the direction is hell and death. But Christ, in his goodness, stepped down from the throne of heaven, gave himself up, emptied himself, and now inviting us to see that the work on Calvary was indeed for us and we can now put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that work on Calvary his body being broken for us is applied to us we have the sacrifice his blood he supplies to us cleanses us for all our sins past present and future so it's actually us rejoicing and we have to do this as often as we can as we said, this practice in different churches is done differently. We saw in the New Testament church, when it first was established, this was a thing that was constantly done. And I'm not trying to debate on how churches should do this. This is based on their own discretion. I have an opinion and I have an opinion who always side with what I feel was being done in scripture. And I'm not against other people who do it differently but at least they're doing it. I'll just say that. But for me, what I'm trying to say is we see in scripture here, in Acts chapter 2, they continued in the fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer. These were things that they constantly had to do. And this is befitting for somebody who's saved. Somebody who's saved should be excited to take part in this remembrance. It takes them back to the reality of their brokenness. So it is important for us to want to remember afresh the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day, especially when we gather with the people of God. Because when we gather with the people of God, these people from different tongues, tribes, and nations have all been put together in the banner of the church on one account, and that's Christ Jesus. So we are celebrating as a reflection of what will happen in glory. As we've seen through the scripture, it says, do this until the Lord comes. And this thing that we do here is an act of remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there will be a time when we don't have to remember the Lord Jesus Christ. Because one day we'll be in his presence. And when we're in his presence, we won't have to remember him through these symbols. We will see him face to face and we'll be in his presence and we'll enjoy him forever. Either through the natural causes of death, God will call us and we'll see him face to face, or when he comes to take his waiting people home. So for the one who's saved, this is the joy of a reality, an expression of one day we are going to no longer remember Christ Jesus. But as we are on this earth, we constantly are taken back to Calvary. We're constantly taken back to the cross. The cross is where our sins were nailed. The cross is a joy for us. The cross is where we met the Lord himself and where our sins 
we are rectified because of the man Christ Jesus who died for us on Calvary. So let's rejoice in this event. The people who of God who are believers, I encourage you to continue to partake in this remembrance service. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember him in your heart of what he's changed. That heart of stone has been now given a heart of flesh. Remember him in your mind. Remember him as you praise him with your mouth. And remember him on a daily basis. But when we gather together as a people of God, we remember him collectively through these emblems and symbols which we see. The, uh, the bread which speaks of his body and the cup which speaks of the new covenant that we have in Christ Jesus because of his blood that he shed for us. So we just thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And if you have any comments on this same topic, please write in the comments. And also, if you're enjoying these sessions of the Gospel Lounge, like, subscribe, and, uh, and share if you are encouraged by this. Until next time, thank you for listening and God bless. Thank you.